Hello everyone and welcome to the Ask Barry V Show. I'm Barry Vanover and we're glad to have Mr. Baker back. I missed you last week. It's good to be back. Seems yeah. like it's been a while. I know yeah. because it was weird doing it without you. I was sitting here by myself. It was a little, little no, it's weird. good to be back. Nick Nick helped me. He asked the questions. So Came through. That was good. Hey guys, today we're gonna to do a, we're gonna start something, you know, different. At the beginning of the show, we're gonna do a little what's happening type thing, just what's going on that we know about or we hear about in the martial arts industry or martial arts in general. So what's been going on or what's happening is we just came back from Vegas yep. last week, we took a little break. Yep. Uh, we had a good show. My uh, The martial arts super show was great. Instructor College was awesome. Instructor College Lots was great. Yeah, we went live. Hopefully you guys got to see some of the Instructor College live uh, on Facebook. If you don't, you can go to uh, Barry Vanover's uh, martial arts management group Facebook page. You can actually see some excerpts of it live. Like, I mean, we literally went live for like an hour mm -hmm. at a time. Uh, so you could see some of it and also um, uh, my my talk on the nine of nine the nine marketing actions every martial arts sh school should do 90% of the time to get 90% of their results uh, I've recorded that whole talk live on Facebook live and that was that's on martial arts management group page as well um, what else is going on show was great it was yeah. great we, uh, big shout out to Century. We got to meet some of the Gracies. That was kind of neat. Oh, yeah, that was really it cool. Was neat to meet Hickson and Henzo and yeah, Carlson that was, Jr. That was, was great. Awesome. So yeah. thank, thank them the, for making that happen. That was pretty cool. Yeah. We have um, things that's going on in martial arts business. Is uh, you know our clients. We've been doing this women's self defense promotion this summer. We really started doing it to test out how it would work for when the fall comes, right? Because summer times. People are vacationing and moving around, but we've just been getting our clients and us even have been getting some surprised. amazing results. <laughs> Pretty surprised. With the women's yeah. self-defense workshops, where you know, uh, even even as I sit here today, we're recording this on Friday, the tw July yeah. the twenty second. The registration now for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I have one hundred and twenty six, twenty seven women pre-registered this morning. And still have the rest of the day. I'm guessing probably 140 will pre-register. And you didn't run that ad very long this time. One right? week. One, one week. week this time. Wow. We, before we were running two weeks, yeah. and we were getting 184 pre-registered, 214 pre-registered. We've done it twice. And a lot of our other clients that we've mentioned, Ken Brayman has been getting. I think he's had over 700 women pre-register, and he had to do it in five or six different self women self defense workshops. You know how much that sounds like BS. It does sound like bullshit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. doesn't it? But you know what? And whatever whatever people think is bullshit or not, he signed up fifty six people last month at his school, and a lot of them came from the women's yeah. self defense workshop. Yeah, those it's results, pretty amazing. Yeah. you know, and uh, uh, and again, we've added last month we added eleven new women, eleven new eleven new students uh, at our training center here became me those members came from the women's self defense workshop of the total number we signed up. And I'll be honest with you. You know, that was almost half the number that we signed up. If we hadn't have done that, we mm -hmm. would have been looking at a, a terrible uh, sure. terrible June. Yeah. But, you know, we had a great June because uh, because of that. So that's been really working, and, and we continue to tweak. We've been developing our materials. Our, we, we created a women's self-defense guide to hand out when they come in. Uh, our marketing materials to funnel those people into a, a six-week self-defense course and then funnel them further into a normal uh, six-month martial arts beginners membership. So we've been perfecting all of that. Um, and of course, social media. That's been tying in with our social media. How many kids did your school sign up a uh, week before last? We signed nine, nine kids, eight memberships. At a mass intro mass on a intro. Saturday morning, nine kids. Yeah. How many showed up? 16. 16, so signed up. It was right at that 50% mark, which was good. A little over, nine yeah. of 16. Yeah. Just from a week's worth of Facebook, of Facebook advertising yeah. to, to promote the Children's Beginning Martial Arts Workshop. Yeah. Um, That's a lot of booth hours, usually. Right. <laughs> right. Um, a lot of school talks. One of our, one of our schools did it uh, last week, and we only signed up three people. But you know what? Three people is three more closer to 20. Yeah. Right, yeah. uh, and 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 we only ran the ad for three days: Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So sixty bucks resulted in three new students. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure you can get. You know, we do twenty dollars a day for any ad that we do. We started at twenty. I'm not sure you can get better that, return. Yeah, yeah, that better return for your money right yeah. now anywhere. 
than social media if you do it correctly. It's an exciting time to be a small business owner. And yeah, time and we're providing all this, of course, yeah. with our maonlineigniter.com website. Oh, and they should keep a uh, look out for the Facebook or the uh, back to school stuff you're doing, right? Aren't you doing a... Oh yeah, we're doing a free back to school kit coming yeah. up. So you'll see that on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, we're giving away free ad kit with it's a display ad and then an ad for your social media, the text for your social media, and then I'm doing a video on the you know the top ten or so uh, back to school marketing tips. So that's free. So you guys look out for that. That'll be new. We have instructorcollege.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a new website up that that just like what I ran in Vegas. It's all about the classroom floor. And that's a membership-based website. It's actually instructoruniversity.com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, instructoruniversity.com. So go check that out and see if it makes sense, if that curriculum and that content on there will help your guys' classes run smoother. And I guess we've just been knee-deep into back to school right now. Yeah, it's that time of year. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah, just been working. Hopefully all you guys, especially if you're in the South, our school starts back here in Tennessee August the 8th. Mm -hmm. um, some schools who... who Mayor, where you're at, it's August 1st. August 1st, yeah. Um, so sometime mid-August is down here in the mm -hmm. south. I know up in the northeast they're going to be starting back after uh, okay. after Labor Day yeah. weekend. But it's pretty much back to school for all of us right now. So hopefully you guys are, are, are working on that. All right, let's go ahead and get into our show. Okay, we got some good questions this week. Uh, Kyle T. asks, he says, I own a martial arts school, and I was wondering what percent of income should be your profit? That's a good question. Good question. Kyle Kyle knows where it's at, right? Yep. It ain't about how much money you gross, it's how much money you put yeah. in your pocket at the about, end of the month. Not about how many students you have, right? Yeah, you know, the funny thing was that there was a somebody did a talk at the martial arts super show and every, you know how everybody introduces themselves and sure. and um, now I heard this from second hand, mm -hmm. but everybody introduces themselves and they of course you want to build up your credentials so the audience is no, like why? why would I listen? Okay, now now yeah. I need to listen to this sure. guy. But the guy was like, I own the largest school in this state, in certain certain state. It's 8,000 square feet. So that oh, was his claim to fame. Yeah, 8,000 square yeah. feet, all right? Yeah. Which has nothing to do with how successful you are, right. how big a square feet yeah. your school is. You know, and, <laughs> and neither does how much money you gross. No. Or neither does how many students you have. Right. It's how much money you put in your pocket that is the real deal. But you know what? Because everybody keeps that information so close, right? A lot of people don't even realize what, how much m money they're profiting because their yeah. books are so bad. Yeah. That's never talked about. It's always gross revenue or number of students. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So going back to Kyle's question, Kyle, uh, uh, that's a really variable question, and I'll tell you why it's variable is because your expenses. You know, it's hard to tell. Some school owner may be running great business systems, but he's overstaffed or he spends too much on marketing, or he doesn't spend enough on marketing, whatever the situation may be, that is so variable. Um, I know guys in, in smaller markets that their rent is so low, they, they work for themselves, they're the instructor themselves, and they're netting some sick money. I mean, your school, your school's yeah. at a 50% yeah. profit, not, that's 50% yeah. profit, right? Margin right now, and that's amazing, right? But let's give Kyle a little more of a concrete answer. Sure. And, and also another thing that makes that question variable is, is the owner's salary included in the, the, the expenses? Or is, you know, so you gotta look at that. When, I, when I'm getting ready to tell you the answer, you gotta ask owners, you gotta ask, well, does that include my, my, my pay or not? But if, you own, if you're an owner and you own a martial arts school, and you've stacked it with about 2.5 people, you've got a couple hundred students, and you do not work in the martial arts school. So your money comes from profit, okay? So your salary is not included. You probably should, if you're, if you're getting a 20, 25%, 26, 27% uh, profit margin or net profit, you're, not, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty well because you're not working in there and you've got to put up money towards staffing, you know, and staffing can eat up 35 to 50 percent of our revenue just on staff alone you know then you go rent utilities and all the advertising expense and all this other stuff on top of that now if you're inside the business yourself then you're probably you're probably making a larger larger percentage of net profit but uh, 20 to 25 20 30 somewhere in that 20 to 30 percent area for net profit is good if you're not in the business and your salary is not included so I hope that helps Great. 
Great question. That's somebody who's paying attention. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah good My question, mom used to always tell me as a little boy, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. She could, exactly right. Couldn't be more true. All right, our next question for this week, Mary Beth L. asked, she says, what tips can I give my instructors about making better connection with the students? Just a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Mary Beth, your, your instructors should be at my instructor college or should go to university. Uh, uh, I don't even know the URL to my own website. It's so new. Instructoruniversity.com. Okay, um, but let's talk about that. Maybe you got young instructors or some some uh, instructors that's not been teaching so long, and they need to make a connection. They need to build rapport with their students. Here's some quick, obvious tips. The three contacts will never fail you, and that's simply training your instructors to look every student in the eye in every class. So when they're teaching, to be scanning the room and looking students in the eye. When you look someone in the eye, there's a instant nanosecond relationship that happens just when you look someone in the eye when they're talking and that's important to get them to scan and look everybody in the eye the next thing is use the student's name as much as possible when they're giving corrections compliments attaboys whatever have them use the students names and then of course a physical touch meaning high fives and fist bumps and pat on the shoulders those types of things uh, that that's a proximity type praising and physical praising it brings a quick connection to to the students as well there's a couple other things that I would probably train your instructor and these are all things you can do quick because I'm trying to help you fast is highlighting and spotlighting every time your instructor does a technique and, and the class does it with repetition have the instructor either spotlight spotlight means we put the spotlight where the students standing so have all the other kids go feet together set turn and face that one student and put them all down and take a knee position and have that student perform do that kick do that combo do that self-defense or whatever and compliment it would sound something like this all right and time everybody feet together set everybody turn with me and face sarah Sarah, show everybody that round kick that you were just doing. Man, that kick was hard, strong, fast, and, and beautiful. Show me that real quick. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, and fit together, set. Good job. Everybody give Sarah two claps. Right? So you spotlighted her. Or highlighting would be bring a student up front in front of the entire class to perform something. Right? Kids love it. They get off on it. And it doesn't matter how well they do. It's just the fact you're showing them attention. So those are five real quick, easy things for your instructors to start doing that will build that instant connection, that instant rapport with your students. Okay? There's things you can do off the mat too, right? So those are all things on the mat. Um, for years, we've always done different types of students of the month. Mm. But put it on Facebook. Uh, of course, get the permission of the parent. Um, and do a little interview with them and their picture. Um, boost it, right? As long as you have this right. signed off to the parents. Um, of course, we've always sent mail to our, our youth students. And you know what? It's nice to even send to adults because it, it means a little bit more and you get something in the mail these days, right? As opposed yeah, yeah. to an email. That's true. And there's really cool apps out there that when you take a picture of a kid or an adult or a, bit, uh, a picture, you can make it into a postcard and send it right from your phone. Yeah, that's so that's a great really idea. cool, right? So yeah. just on the fly, somebody's doing great in class. Snap a picture of them, and later that night, send that postcard out. It'll be there in a couple days. So yeah, and, and off the floor, that's all. Those things are so important. Yeah. And don't forget your social media. Don't always be putting up announcements and ads and things like that on your social media. You need to use it for that, but you've got to be personable. Putting up pictures of your students so that they mm -hmm. see them keeps them engaged, keeps them and their parents liking your page so they can continue seeing your post. And it makes them feel good when you've highlighted them on social media. You know, I was just listening to a, a, a podcast actually on the way into work this morning, and they were talking about U.S. Airline, such a big company on Instagram, only has, comparatively to how big the company is, mm -hmm. they only have a few followers, mm -hmm. you know, whatever 300,000 right. yeah. followers right. compared they have when they have a, a million employees mm -hmm. or whatever right. even it was even half even half of their employees Four. don't even follow wow. US Air yeah. that are US Air employees on Instagram wow. uh, and if they were talking about because when you look at US Air on, on on social media all they're doing is putting up pictures of their planes and stuff yeah. right yeah. so they should be putting pictures up of people in airports yeah being happy, yeah. going to places, laughing, crying, yeah. you know, talking about customer service or saving things or travel tips. Yeah. But a big company like that is missing the boat. We have to do the same thing with our students. We have to be personal, give that one-to-one -one content, right, that makes them uh, see us more than just a business. Yeah, you know? Some kind of emotion. Right? Yeah. yeah, and that's, you know, we may have gotten off track on the classroom floor. Uh, 
who is this Mary Beth, Mary Beth. but uh, can still a connection yeah. with the students. Very good. Our next question comes from Paul Cole. He says, hi, I listen to the Asbury V show rigorously. So thank you, Paul. That's that's awesome. Uh, just wondered how many staff you would have present for a mass intro. So how many people do we want to have when we're doing a mass intro? Mass, on a mass yeah. intro. Yeah. And by the way, school owners, if you're not implementing mass intros, you're you're missing such a, a, a you could look, I'm not going to say that you're going to master it to the point that some of our clients have that is just going to take your business to a, a, a double your, your student body level, right? That has happened so frequently, but I'm telling you, it's going to increase your, your overall student count by 20% easy, 20, 30% easily. Um, you know, it's funny. He's talking about the number of people I've done mass intros so long and so many years. It reminds me, I was at a, I was doing a school evaluation, uh, for this school. I'm not going to mention where, Indiana, uh, but uh, I was doing a school evaluation and, and they brought me in. They would bring me in about every five or six months and I would go in the public schools and teach their PE classes at their elementary schools for them. And then I would do the mass intros on the weekends. So I guess it wasn't even a school evaluation. They were just bringing me in there to sign people up and do the mass intros yeah. every so many months, yeah. right? I, I used to joke with the owner, I've signed up more students at your school than you have, yeah. Yeah. right? And it's, it was true. Um, but they, they opened up a new location and they brought me in there to sign people up. So I remember the night before I met with their staff, they had a program director, uh, the owner, uh, the owner's son, and uh, an assistant instructor. There were four of them, right? And then me. So we went over exactly what we're going to do when people show up for the mass intro. Swear to God, I showed up at that school about 20 minutes till 10 because I was doing, I didn't need to be there, at, you know, an hour early. But I showed up at maybe 9.30 or something mm -hmm. because I always memorized the students' names. I wanted to get there. The doors were locked at the school. Um, there was people outside in the parking lot, parents and kids out in the parking lot standing to get into a mass intro. Could you imagine doing a mass intro? You're trying to sign these people yeah. up. The school's not open and they're still hanging around. I would have pulled up like, oh, I guess yeah, they, yeah. they don't want our business, business that yeah. bad or they're not else. open today or there was a mistake yeah. and I would have driven away. Yeah. But all these people were in this parking lot. And of course, now I'm feeling embarrassed and stressed because they thought I was the instructor right. or the owner or something, right? So I go in program director shows up, the son and the other instructor shows up, and they basically did nothing. They just stood around like they were frozen. So I remember I'm, I'm signing liability waivers and getting information. I'm handing uniforms out. I'm directing people to the floor. I go out, I do the mass intro. I have to hold the bags. And literally there was probably 40 families there, 40 kids mm -hmm. on the floor. Yeah. I'm break, holding the boards. I'm doing the whole thing. And, and signed up 22 people, I remember, that morning yeah. for this, this, this school. But they didn't help me at all. So the unusual thing was later that day, we, we regrouped and we had a meeting. And I literally went around the table. And I was like, all right, first, Miss Program Director, you showed up late, and when you got here, you did nothing to help me. You didn't even offer to help me, so you're fired. And I went down, uh, school owner's son, you stood around, didn't do anything, didn't offer to hold a pad, you stood around talking to your assistant instructor buddy there, so you're fired. Assistant instructor buddy, you're worse than him, and your hair's too long, you're fired. fired. And then I looked at the owner right in front of his staff, and I looked at the owner, and I was like, you know what, you showed up late. I was already doing the mass intro and you come in 15, 20 minutes once it's already started. What was so important? Right. And then I fired him in front of his staff. So true story. And, and a good friend of mine, Greg Silva, was there with me and he can contest. He, he shook his head and he's like, oh no, Barry just fired the owner in front of his all the staff. So uh, Paul, in that instance, I did it all and was successful. So uh, one man show can do mass intros. You just have to plan it a little better. You know, when people come in, use your membership. I have the liability waiver on the front of my normal membership. So I have them fill out the top part of the membership, put the kids information and birthday where it belongs and sign just the liability waiver. They don't sign the, the money portion or the membership part. That way I've got the membership that much already filled out. I've already got my uniforms. I've taken the belts out of the uniforms. So when the people are coming in, it's a smooth process to fill out the information, get a uniform change, sit down on the floor, right? Now, I'm not saying that you should do it by yourself, right? In an idea situation, you need at least one good helper with you to help you as the people are coming in, 
fill out all that information, get the students in uniform, direct them to the classroom floor. At one part, if you're doing the mass intro and you're conducting it, then you need to move to the classroom floor, start setting the students where you want and memorizing their names because that's such a key point in building rapport to get the families to sign up. The other person is going to, once you've got all the kids on the floor, the other person is going to bring, your boards are already on the floor. The, the, the other person is going to bring the belts because they went out there and wrote all the names of the students on each belt. They put the belts right beside the board while you're doing the seminar. They hand out the class schedules to all the parents kind of in the middle of your seminar. Now, you don't really need an instructor to help you with the mass intro because I get dads or moms to hold the pads and help me if I need to. And I even have the dads or moms hold the boards as the students' kids are kicking them and breaking them, preferably dads, if I have to. And you know what, worst case scenario, I hold everything myself. If I've got, even if I, let's say I had 12 kids and I've got four lines of four, I'll have one line stand up while the other one stay down, have them go through the line for the kick, sit down, next one, have them go through the line for the kick, and I do that every time we go through the ABCs of success, and I'll do the board breaking, I'll just bring them up one at a time and have everybody clap for them if I have to. So, you know, it would be great if you had one person to help you, uh, but you know what? And it's even better if you've got two people to help you, right? But you can do it on your own if necessary. I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for, but hopefully that gave you some tips on if you've got to do it by yourself or if you, you know, you've got one of those key employees, key instructors with you. If nothing else, get your wife to come help, you know? Yeah. So it can be done with one, but advice yeah. to have some help, Absolutely. Some solid help. All right, last question for this week comes from Jack M. He says, we are hoping to take your advice from the last show and set up some promotional booths at an elementary school's open house. Any tips for me and my staff on how to make this successful? What do you think? Lots of tips. Lots of tips. Lots of tips. So uh, back to school time, promotional booth. You know, if I could only do a promotional booth one place, it would be an elementary school. That's our, our that's where our, where our target yep. market is, right? Um, but we want to make sure our booth, we want to make sure you have all the materials. So, and that takes time, you gotta look at your budget, you gotta make sure you know where to order them. But um, everything from your mascot to your, what we yeah, call like pop Yeah, like what's gonna order. attract people yeah, to Yeah, what's the gonna get them to come over. Yeah. Sometimes it can be a little intimidating just standing there with some marketing cards in your hand. People, what's the purpose to come over and talk to you? So you need right. some sort of attraction, right? So they need a, maybe a, maybe a mascot if you have to, if you've got one. If you don't have one, maybe you're doing spin wheel. Maybe you're breaking board, letting kids break a board for the first time. Right, you're, you've got your backdrop, your pop-up banners, you've got your logo, you've got lead boxes, giving away free membership, raffling off, free birthday parties. You gotta have some reason. Maybe you've got just a couple demo team members spinning weapons or something. Mm -hmm. You gotta have some reason to attract them to your booth. Having a video monitor there that's showing clips of your curriculum videos or classes or demonstrations or whatever, give people a reason to come over. You know, and then of course. Next thing you got to do is you got to you got to gather the you got to gather the lead. No, promote an event. So especially like Paul, if he, if Paul does mass intros, Paul needs to promote next Saturday's mass intro or next week's whenever the mass intro is, and be inviting people to what we do at back to school is we invite them to a karate for concentration workshop, right? So we would be passing out information about that and telling them that by the way. Every kid that shows up at this receives a free uniform while supplies last. And if you want to pre-register for this, we'll guarantee you a uniform when you get there. That way you've gathered their lead and got a mental commitment that they're coming, right? And then, of course, that promoted your event, and then you got to gather leads. So you gathered your lead from that event promotion, the mass intro promotion. You gathered leads from your birthday party uh, uh, raffle box, your membership raffle box, um, Spin wheel, if you did spin wheel, everybody has to give their lead information to spin the wheel. If they're breaking a board, they gotta give their lead information to break the board, sign a little form with their information on it. But that's the gist of it, and have fun, and more importantly, keep your instructors engaged. Don't have them just stand behind the booth talking to each other. Have them out in front of the booth handing out those mass intro cards, because inviting them to that free community event is the reason to engage them, the reason you have to talk to them. And then once you're talking to them, then you go ahead and you gather the lead. That's the best I can do. Yeah, and just be organized. So when you make a, make a booth kit, right? So each one of our schools will have a kit and we know exactly, you know, what items are to be in that kit. So it's usually packaged up and mobile, right? And right. then, you know, have a system. Make sure your staff knows what to say when, when they're approaching to promote the event. And uh, so just make sure you're organized and well prepared because it's an amazing it's opportunity. It's a good opportunity yeah. to, to blow, that's for sure. Um, 
announcements would be we're having a those of you that are thinking about maybe doing a uh, uh, martial arts fitness program or revamping yours you really should look into our cross kick program you can see that at crosskick.com we have a cross kick instructor certification happening August 18th through the 20th okay and we that information is on the screen there for you right Nick it's gonna be on the oh, yeah. screen uh, we have what else is going on uh, our, our martial arts management group fall symposium is going to be here in Knoxville Tennessee October 6th through the 8th all martial arts schools and their staff are invited to attend uh, great business information great marketing we do program directors training we do instructor training and we do some martial arts training if you if you're interested in Krav Maga certifications or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu you know, I have something to say about that the symposium here at Knox yeah. in Knoxville you know, if you only own one school, and maybe you only plan to only own one school, you should always treat that school as if you're going to have multiple schools, right? Always have a system for something, a layout of your school, a system for all your sales, etc. So, you know, if you're not involved with Premier or Martial Arts Management Group, come to the event, come look at the Premier schools, and start trying to kind of get a framework of how you can approach yeah. your, your one school as your one mini franchise. Yeah, this is open you to know, the, the martial arts industry. You, so don't, you don't have to be a client, and you don't have to be a Premier Martial Arts and school take a to, look around to and, come, yeah. to, to learn some cool things, network with some cool yeah. people. If you get one or two good ideas and go back and implement it. it, and which I guarantee you will, it's worth the trip. You know, I was... I used to travel to schools all the time and, and still do now for work, but even as a school owner, I used to travel schools. When I heard somebody was doing something cool or amazing yeah. or having an event, I'm there because yeah. it kept me motivated, excited, and learning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so I hope I hope some people come that haven't came here and, cool. and uh, see what's going on. So. All right, man. Good show. That's it. All, right. all right. Thanks, guys. See we'll see you next week. time.